Today I want to talk a little bit about what we have presented at ASH uh, this year, uh, starting with the GMMG Burma trial, which was actually uh, one of the first trials that were done in collaboration with the other German study group, the DSMM. Um, a few years ago, uh, we and others have uh, shown uh, that the rare but present BURAF mutation in multiple myeloma can be a therapeutic target. And uh, we all know that uh, mutational targets in myeloma are rare, uh, restricted to small patient populations, and, um, and most of them are even not really targetable. But um, here with the BRAV V600E mutation, we all know from melanoma that this is uh, standard of care there and can be very well addressed uh, by uh, inhibitors. So um, we designed a phase two trial um, enrolling patients uh, with the BRAF V600E mutation in more than half of the myeloma cells in their, in their body. Um, and we um, explored uh, the combination of a MEK inhibitor with a BRAF inhibitor. So according to uh, what is known and done in in melanoma, and we used encorafenib and binimetinib, encorafenib, the BRAF inhibitor, and binimetinib, uh, the MEK inhibitor in combination, all oral, no DEX uh, or no other um, combination partner. What we did in this trial, so the primary um, endpoint was the overall response rate. Uh, secondary endpoints included, of course, progression for survival and other um, factors. Um, we enrolled uh, 12 patients so far. As I said, it's a rare patient population. Um, and uh, 12 patients so far have been enrolled. Uh, median prior lines of therapy were five. Um, all of these patients had uh, a proteasome inhibitor and an inhibitor exposure before. Half of the patients were also exposed to an NTC38 antibody before. Um, in terms of safety, it was relatively well tolerated. So the side effects we saw were basically what we know from uh, melanoma. So some macular edema, some blurred vision, cramps, arthralgia, a little bit of skin rash, um, and a few patients who ha had a, a drop in cardiac function, which was clinically not apparent and not significant. But in echocardiogram, it was like a drop at 10% of uh, the um, left ventricular function, which recovered after um, dose reduction. Um, grade 3 and 4 uh, toxicities were anemia, thrombocytopenia, and uh, a few hypertensions. Actually, we only had two SAEs in uh, this trial. Uh, one was a pneumonia that was considered related, and the other one was an unrelated SAE. In terms of the primary endpoint, uh, the overall response rate was actually quite impressive. So uh, 10 out of these 12 patients, which were 83%, responded despite uh, this heavy pre-treated uh, patient population with a median of five prior lines of therapy. So overall, overall response rate were 83%. And uh, half of the patients, 50%, had at least a VGPR. And a quarter of the patients were, had at least an NZR or a CR. So um, quite uh, rapid and deep responses. And uh, as I said, most patients responded. Um, while the survival uh, times, uh, PFS and all survival are, are pending at this time, um, we can share that we saw duration of responses that exceeded one year, although uh, the duration of responses in general were very heterogeneous with patients with, with very short responses, about three months, but quite a substantial number of patients that had a response uh, exceeding half a year and, as I said, even some uh, exceeding one year. In conclusion, um, we see very deep response rates, uh, high response rates in patients harboring a BRAF v 600 e mutation. Although, as I said, this is a rare mutation in patients, about 4 to 6% in refractory patients. Um, it is worth looking for, and um, it might be a good idea to use uh, a MEK and then BRAF inhibitor in combination for this kind of uh, patient population.